morning, Chair. My name is Samuel Chege, the auditor from the Office of the Auditor General. You're welcome to control of budget. Good morning, Chair members. Uh, all protocols observed. My name is CPA Nancy Kendi, uh, Principal Fiscal Analyst, Parliamentary Liaison from the Office of the Control of Budget. You're welcome, National Treasury. Thank you, Honor Honorable Chair and members. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Cyrus Mwangi Munyo. I'm a parliamentary officer representing the National Treasury in this committee, Chair. Got it. Thank you. Uh, Clark, did you invite uh, the County Assembly Public Accounts Committee? Yes, Chair, we did invite <coughs> them and they're present. Uh, Chair, Public Accounts Committee, Kisumu County, if you're present, you could uh, go on record. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'm Ken Ouko, uh, Chair, uh, Public Accounts and Investment Committee, Kisumu County Assembly. Thank you. You are there. Are you with other members? Yes. Okay, please introduce yourselves. Thank you, Chair. My name is Seth Okumu, the MCA of East Seme, and a member of the committee. Thank you, Chair. My name is Sustino Chien. I'm the committee clerk, People Committee County Assembly of Kisum. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. My name is Chris Oguta. I'm the clerk assistant at the committee. You are welcome. We then go to the executive. Governor Kisumu, please go on record. The chairman, my name is Anyang Nyongo, Governor Kisumu County. Uh, your delegation can also introduce themselves, just name and designation. Sir so Chairman, my name is George Okong, the County Executive Committee Member for Finance and Economic Planning. Chairman, my name is Paul Jengawero, Chief Officer of Finance. Chairman, my name is Robert Omanjoga, County Solicitor, Kisumu County. Chairman, my name is Philip Adundo. I'm a chief officer in the county government of Kisumu in charge of special delivery. Uh, the, uh, speak on the mic. Thank you. My name is Colin Sumondi, CPA, head of financial reporting unit, Kisumu County. My name is Kungu J. Otieno, director of revenue, Kisumu County. Uh, Chair, my name is Odiamba Evans from the Office of the Chief Officer, Department of Agriculture, Kisumu County. Uh, Chairman, my name is John Oyua, Chief Officer, Public Affairs and Communication. Thank you. Chair, my name is Carol Enangelo, Internal Auditor. Chair, my name is CPSES, Godfrey Yenya, Director of Audit County Government of Kisumu. Chair, my name is Eliud Obonyo, Acting Director of Supply Chain Management. Okay, I think that wraps up the introductions. Uh, we appreciate the media who uh, ensure that these proceedings are public. We then move to the next agenda, which is, um, I think we should have adopted the agenda earlier. So could I get a proposal? I propose, Chair. Thank you, Senator Gattai. I second, Chair. Thank you, Senator Onyonka. Even though our agenda, um, we, are, we are done with a brief on the audit report, the brief by the Office of the Auditor General, and we have also taken note of the report by the Parliamentary Budget Office. We uh, are supposed to consider the report of the Auditor General for two financial years, 2020-2021, 2021-2022, and also to consider the receiver of revenue statement for the financial year 2021-2022. I think uh, I will make, uh, I will give certain directions, but once the oath has been administered. So, Clark, let's move to the next order on administration of oath. Do some is where well, the evidence that I shall give before this committee in respect of the matters before the committee shall be the truth. The whole truth. 
truth and nothing but the truth. So, Mr. Chairman, sir, I hereby table the following document before the committee. The management responses and the accompanying annexures of the county executive of Kisumu for the year financial year 2020-21 and 2021-2022. I thought there's a third set of. Uh... Yes. Yeah. Sure. Okay. For the financial year 2021, 2020, 2021, and 2021, 2022. And then response to the Senate on the report of the receiver of revenue. Uh, what is the general and county executive of Kisumu for the year ended 30th June 2021? Receiver of revenue? I thought that was for 2022. Uh, clerk, just guide uh, the governor. Yes, sir. Because your, your document is wrongly, uh, is wrongly captioned. It's supposed to be 20, the receiver of revenue report was for 2022. Okay, Let, can I say it again, please? Yeah. Because uh, 2022 wasn't it? Okay. Response to the Senate on the report of the receiver revenue of Audit General on County Executive of Kisumu for the year ended June 30th, 2021, and 2022. And 2022. There, there is, uh, uh, CC, you must guide uh, the governor because. 2022. Oh, I see, okay. No, because. I think okay. Okay, so uh, response of the Senate on the report of the receiver of revenue of which the general and county gets to Sumo for the year ended 30th June 2022. Okay, now, um, Auditor General, we've got uh, three uh, documents before us. Let us start with um, the, the response on uh, the financial year. Ended 30th June 2022. Uh, point of order, Chair, before the Auditor General proceeds, as a small issue, I would like to. Okay, so. If you will allow me. Uh, first of all, uh, Governor Anyang, Governor, Senator Anyang, and it's a pleasure to see you here. The only thing that has disturbed me is that you came with 14 men and one woman. <laughs> I don't know why Kisumu doesn't have any women who can come here to be witness to what you're coming to present. Governor? I think the chairman answered this question last time. You know, we get these people appointed of a public service board. We can't create them when we're coming here. So if they are in office, we're not going to manufacture a woman to be an office where she was not appointed to govern the service board. Governor, can I, can I just yeah, stop you there, please? Uh, what, what, you, what you're conflating two meetings. Yes. Uh, because that was a meeting of the Public Investments Committee, yeah. uh, which yes. I attended. This is uh, a different committee. And whereas uh, that answer would make sense at peak, because you are dealing with institutions whose uh, employees are uh, uh, appointed yes. through the board that you are referring us to, this is your county executive. Uh, I don't think you can ah, use... I see what you mean. Okay. okay. Well... <laughs> I see so, there, there you catch court me. So, so the, uh, I, I, I think that uh, part, quite a good part of this entourage here is part of the executive. Appointed by public service board. Now the people that I appoint yes, are the people who are in front here. Correct. So yeah. let's start with the ones who are in front. The ones who are in front. Yeah. Well, you know... The well, how many ladies, Governor, are supposed to be in front? Are no, not here? supposed to be. <laughs> how, many, how many ladies are there in the executive of the county government? Assume there are four out of ten. But unfortunately, the portfolios they are, they are responsible for are not which are ex expected to be in front of the committee today. The one expected to be committed today are these ones. So, Governor, tell us those those four. What portfolios do they? Ah, very good. good. Those four <laughs> hold the following portfolios. First of all, the county member of 
in charge of public service. Hold on. Public service, popular participation and governance in my office is a lady. Secondly, the Minister of Charge of Water and Environment is a lady. Thirdly, the Minister of Charge of Trade, Industry and Tourism is a lady. The Minister of Charge of Culture, Tourism, Youth and Gender Issues is a lady. Out of ten. How many chief officers do you have, Governor? Uh, I must have chief officers corresponding to the ministries. Sorry? Uh, ten. And there are ten. Yeah, sorry? The chief officers are corresponding to the ministries. And there are ten ministries. How many are they? The women? Uh, I think there are four. There are four against uh, six. Yeah. Um, I, I think we... Let's make... Uh, but I quick think business chair, of this. Chair, chair equally, even the assembly. It looks like ladies are not there, so they cannot be excused. So we want to know whether there are ladies in the public accounts committee of this uh, Or so there is no way that you can oversight the governor that he has complied with gender when you are not serious also with the gender issues. Uh, chairman? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, we have a lady. Out of seven members, we have uh, one uh, lady. And uh, this is according to the composition of the House. Actually, most of them, we only have two elected leaders. And some, the remaining are uh, ladies nominated. Okay. M m members, I think let's uh, get back to the key focus, which is the billions of shillings uh, that uh, Kisumu County receives and where the Auditor General has returned an adverse opinion. I think we've got more problems there. But uh, the point is made, Prof, that um, those of us who know you know that you are uh, a serious um, uh, campaigner for gender equity and parity, uh, but it needs to be demonstrated even uh, in your delegation. When you mentioned that trade industry is uh, headed by a lady, I've seen some audit queries on markets, Kombewa market, trade-related issues. So at least that could have been relevant for the uh, CC to be here. But the point has been made. Uh, uh, the rules that we are using here, uh, you are the one who created them. Uh, I took this chair after you. So there are, there are things, there are um, resolutions that have been made by the House and uh, you have been part of the thought process. So I know that if you are sitting where I'm sitting, you'd probably be concerned in the same way that uh, the members of this committee are concerned. So, members, let's now proceed to the, uh, to the core issues. The response for 2021-2022, Auditor General, have you reviewed it and are you able to lead us in that conversation? Sure. Uh, we, are, we are not able to lead a conversation on that, on the year ended 21-22, uh, <coughs> basically because... Uh, We received this uh, response a bit treat. When did you receive the response? We received it on Wednesday, 10th, uh, and it did not have any annexures. So even if we had uh, wanted to look at them, we could not have verified anything. This was received through email. Thank you. What about the receiver of revenue um, statement? The receiver of revenue was received uh, on Tuesday, 9th, uh, 9th of this month, it was also on email, but we had managed to look at it, but uh, uh, in our opinion, it would go well if we look to get them together with the financial statements for the year 21, 2021-2022. Uh, Thank you. So, Prof, you understand the problem we have with backlog, that we should not be discussing 2020 in 2024. And that's why we compressed the two financial years, so that you make one visit to the Senate and we make use of a Monday when we are not sitting, uh, when the House is not sitting, to clear those two financial years and the receiver of revenue statement. The Auditor General is reporting that we are unable to proceed with 2021-2022. Is there any reason that uh, could have occasioned that delay 
in submission of records to the Auditor General. I will ask George, the Minister for Finance, to respond. George. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through the Governor, <clears throat> I think on this particular occasion, and it's the first time we are delayed by one day to submit the annexes in particular, uh, I think it is because of the pressures we took from Senate within one week. Um, we had an invitation to the Public Investments Committee for three financial years, for three financial years again, and also three uh, county funds. Um, we tried to request that committee to give us a different date because we already had... Uh, George, uh, please refrain from discussing uh, what is before the committees. Okay. We have just asked a simple question. What occasioned the delay? Uh, because, you see, uh, strictly speaking, with that report from the Auditor General, this meeting ought to have been adjourned by now. Mr. Chairman, other than what I've just said, which I'm sorry is not relevant, the delay is because mainly because of the staff capacity that we have. We do not have as many people as we would have needed to serve the notices we had this particular month. If we had more people at the county treasury and more people in the department, we would have managed uh, the two invitations. We, had le we have less people. What, what was your opinion in that, in that financial year on the financial statements, Auditor General? The, what was your opinion? On the it was an adverse opinion. And what was your opinion on the receipt of revenue statement? It was a disclaimer of opinion. So, uh, Prof, it means that this problem has not just started this week. You've got a systemic problem in the county. And uh, we were, in our earlier brief, I think we are all um, uncomfortable with Kisumu having adverse opinions and disclaimers, uh, knowing uh, the background of the governor having been a chair, having been a member of the Senate, a disclaimer means that you have basically refused to cooperate with the Auditor General, isn't it? You have not provided any documentation to support your revenue. A disclaimer on revenue. I thought revenue would be the easiest thing to, to explain and to justify. And then you've got an adverse opinion on the financial statements for that financial year, 2021-2022. Prof, I think that does not fit very well with your reputation. Mr. Chairman, I agree entirely with you, and I think that I'll take it up with the necessary department, because I don't understand whether that should be so. Uh, there should be a clear explanation. So for 2021-2022, Auditor General, You, it is clear that we cannot proceed. For 2020-2021, did you receive the documentation in good time and are you able to prosecute? I, I wish to confirm that we received it within uh, the timelines. That is, we received it on Tuesday, 9th of uh, uh, April, this, 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 uh, this month, which is exactly a week to the deadline. Okay. Uh, Senator Chirage. Well, it is important that we proceed. My only concern is a situation where we are having cross-cutting issues in the recent year of 2021-2022 and 2021-2022. Uh, and yet you are saying it was not submitted in time. How will we navigate that? The, I think the cross-cutting issues are between the receiver of revenue statement and the financial statement for 2021-2022. So even if you are ready with the receiver of revenue, we cannot process it. If we, if, if you are not ready with the main financial statements. That is true, Chair. Sure. So for 2020-2021, we can deal with the issues? We can deal with the issues, yes. Okay. Uh, Chairman Park. The person. The first. Which, which is the last uh, financial year that you dealt with as a committee? 19... 2019-2020. Uh, that is also very untidy to be discussing the year 
2019 in 2024. Uh, what could be the reasons for that? Uh, I think uh, this comes to the other committee we had in the second assembly. They did very little work as compared to, so we got a lot of backlog of, of, of reports. Mishimua Uko, you've been in office for almost two years now. Yes. And you've been chair for almost two years. Yeah. So what have you done in those two years with yes. the committee? So far, I have over 20 reports so far. 20, 21 reports. For which financial years? For, uh, from 2020, from 20, 2019 to 2020. 2019 to 2022. Yeah, I'm talking about funds. I'm talking around the funds. Yes. And live, live around the funds. I'm talking about the. Okay. Yeah, the reason why we invite you alongside the governor yeah. is uh, sometimes we expect that you have already uh, considered these reports because you have only one executive as we've got 47 county executives to deal with. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're in that situation, you should never be five, five reports. Is it five or uh, four reports behind? Yes. You are four reports behind. So we must encourage you, as a public accounts committee of the assembly, you exercise primary oversight. Yes. What we do is secondary. So um, it looks like there's a problem at the executive and there's a problem at the assembly. So we just want to encourage you to pull up your socks and try to be as current as possible. The Senate should never be ahead of the county assembly in consideration of uh, audit reports. So if you had already considered this report, you would have benefited from your resolution and from your report. Mm -hmm. We will therefore do what we are not supposed to do, uh, which almost looks like primary oversight. So please, um, I hope you'll take some notes from, uh, from this session. Uh, thank you for the guidance. Okay. Yeah. Members, do we agree then that we deal with the one financial year where the Auditor General is ready? Uh, Prof, now it is your loss because we have given you this opportunity to come and we finish three reports. I think it's to your benefit to clear these matters when you're still in office, to avoid a situation where we are invoking the Constitution when you're out of office to bring you before the Senate to explain things that you did while in office. So. Uh, take it positively when we compile the years it's uh, it is to your benefit so uh, crack the whip on your officers because you now must make another trip to Nairobi uh, for the other financial year which would have sorted out today we can then um, go to the 2020-2021 report Auditor General give us your opinion and then we go to the basis of the opinion Thank you, Chair. The report of the Auditor General on County Executive of Kisumu for the year ended 30th June 2021. Report on the financial statements. It was an adverse opinion. The basis for adverse opinion was on unsupported uh, receipts. Ju just a minute. Uh, PDO, uh, I saw you had a brief parliamentary budget office. W what was the opinion in the prior year? There was something that you had put in the file. Do you have it? Could uh, you have it? Yes. What, what was the opinion in the prior year? I, I can start from 2019. Yeah, from 2019. It was adverse. Uh, prof, you need to listen to this. 2020. Uh, just order, Prof. So that was 2019? It was an adverse opinion. 2019, 2020? 2018, 2019. Or 20, oh, 2018? 2019. Was adverse. An adverse opinion. 2019, 2020? 2019, 2020. So, Prof, four years of adverse opinion. Doesn't this constitute persistent material breach of the PFM Act and regulations? That's what answer that, George. No, Prof, I, 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 I want, I want, I want, um, 
I think I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Definitely, Mr. Speaker, that's, Mr. Chairman, that's serious. But then as a governor, I trust the management of financial matters, the finance minister and his team. And therefore, before it, even it goes to the, to, the, to the auditor, they should have cleared the deck. That's why I'm asking, why was this an adverse opinion? I don't micromanage departments. I give them a responsibility. Because these uh, opinions were rendered during your time in office. I think 2018-2019, uh, you had uh, taken over as the governor of Kisumu. You are no longer with us in the Senate. And um, when you sat on this chair, th there was a long struggle with the Council of Governors on the responsibility of a chief executive officer. You do recall uh, that uh, you insisted, or the Senate insisted, that the governor is described as a CEO of the entity. And therefore, there are certain responsibilities that uh, he holds. Even though he does not micromanage or run the departments, but you are the captain of the ship. So uh, I, I, I would not be very happy if you are very fast to pass the hot potato uh, to the CEC. That's why I want your perspective as the CEO. The expectation is year one, you have an adverse opinion, then you must call your team to order, whip them, and give them instructions that it cannot be adverse again. But then it happens again, and again, and again. In that situation, there are certain conditional grants that you cannot receive. I think, uh, for example, K was it uh, KDSP? There was a conditional grant that you could not receive if you had an adverse opinion. So there's a direct loss of money uh, for the people of Kisumu. So um, there is a county where we said that was it Nairobi, Senator Sifuna? Marsabit, where we denied them. They were losing because of, of the, the adverse opinion. Of the opinion. That was Marsabit. But we have also said, as a house, that where there is persistent material breach of the law, as evidenced by the opinion of the Auditor General, then there is the provision on stoppage of funds. I think that is uh, at call, is it 225 or 252, thereabouts. Because four years of adverse opinion tells you that there is something wrong. The chairman, that's why I changed the finance minister in 2020. and got a new finance minister. Because I realized that the finance minister was not being the captain of the ship. When I give them trust to run the ministry. Like you, I take this very seriously. Because, quite honestly, we depend largely for development projects on donor funds and other funds that are negotiated directly with the private sector. Therefore, I expect the public funds managed by the ministry. Manage, manage properly, and you're right. I, can, I would be the last person to deny that statement that you've made. Uh, Auditor General, what is our, the status of 22-23? Uh, there, there has been some marked uh, improvement. I want to confirm that uh, the report for the year to added uh, that year, June 2023, was a qualified uh, opinion. Yes. But I think they can go ahead and get an unqualified if they... Yes, we will go into that. I just wanted to know if there is a light at the end of the tunnel, uh, Prof. Yes, definitely light at the light, <laughs> light end of the tunnel. And I'd like the Minister of Finance to be very frank with the committee over these issues. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think it's uh, what the governor has said. Um, there was a change it, at the Treasury. I came in in 2020, and um, since then, there has been an improvement. In fact, the report of 2020, 2021, uh, when I came in midway, was an adverse opinion. 2021, 2022, when we discussed it, Mr. Chairman, I think the county will raise some, some issues on the, that opinion in terms of whether it was advised or qualified when that time comes. But 2021, 20, I mean 2022, 2023 is qualified. So there has been a much difference. Talk, speaking for myself as the new minister who was appointed, I think I have driven change in two years. Now, we, let's, let's look at the basis of the adverse opinion and see whether uh, there has been an improvement as you have indicated uh, because many of the issues here 
the brief we have received from the Auditor General is that he's still dissatisfied uh, with, with their resolution. So, members, can we go to the basis of the opinion? Auditor General, start with uh, your basis for adverse opinion and supported receipts. Uh, paragraphs. Basis for adverse opinion and supported receipts. Paragraph 1.1. The statement of financial performance for the year ended 30th June 2021 reflects total receipts of Kenya shillings 10 billion 176 279 thousand and seventy four, which has not been supported by regards from the integrated financial management information system. If me, Chair, I, I wish to confirm that uh, the only amount, subsequent amount that uh, they were able to demonstrate to us, was 138 million 165,137. An amount of ten billion zero that eight uh, two fourteen zero that seven. Uh, it has not been uh, supported so far. Thank you, Governor. Your response to one point one. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Through the Governor, I will read the county uh, response. <coughs> The management through the support of the National Treasury had initiated modalities to ensure that all receipts, both exchequer and on source revenue, are captured in the Integrated Financial Management Information System, IFMIS, and we have attached ledgers for 2023-2024, which are half-year postings, and now we are compliant. Uh, we have also Annex 854, which are found on page 22 to page 31. Mr. Chairman, if you go to the volume page 22 to page 31, are annexed yours. Yeah. Is, so is, is any member able to make sense of uh, the journals that confirm the postings that we are making now? Of uh, uh, 22, 22 to 31. We, we, we need to stick to explanations in the financial year under discussion. Uh, you will be able to demonstrate the changes that have been made or what you're doing now uh, when we discuss those uh, financial years. What you need to do is to paint to the committee. Why why would there not be ledgers from IFMIS for receipts during that financial What are the what, Where are those ledgers? We know you are currently doing them. And if the next years you are pointing us to are for 2023-2024, that it doesn't uh, answer the question. Mr. Chairman, that's why the response starts with citing the support from the National Treasury because in the previous years before this committee we have cited uh, the lack of capacity and tabled letters that were written for national to National Treasury to assist in the previous reports and we are saying that the Treasury has now come in handy even though they came in later. Uh, 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 that's, that's You're saying the problem was Treasury? The, tr the problem was backlog in the IFMIS system for which we needed a technical assistance from the National Treasury, and we wrote to them. Uh, I think we have tabled those letters before we can bring them again. Uh, Dr. Munua, when a uh, when, when, uh, county receives money from Exchequer, how is that receipt captured in IFMIS? Someone has to go into IFMIS and create a record for the receipt, or how does it work? Just explain it to us. Uh, <coughs> thank you, Chair. When the National Treasury releases the Exchequer to a county government, uh, it receives that money in the in the in their CRF, and it's upon them now to post it according to the items as per their budget. Then from there, they are able then to utilize the money <coughs> according to the votes as posted. So you can only spend once, you can only spend what, what you have received, isn't Actually, it? Actually, yes. Uh, county government are supposed to spend within the ambit of their vote. They cannot spend beyond, uh, beyond the arm's length. So, do Dr. Munio, clear something for me. If the, the Auditor General wants this to be supported by ledgers, what are those things? You know, some of us are not accountants. <laughs> What are these ledgers that they need to, the, the Auditor General needs to see so that uh, he clears uh, the Governor? Actually, um, see, uh, like uh, this in particular, this uh, query where 
we have uh, unsupported receipts. This is uh, a receipt, a receipt they have received the money, but uh, they cannot show how they received the money. Because you once mean, you receive... Eh? What do you mean? By M-Pesa or by cash? What do you mean how they received? Okay, let me make a demonstration. Yes, please. Because uh, uh, the county government uh, receives money from the exchequer and also receives money through their own source revenue. Okay. Now, let us see uh, an example of uh, a receipt from Kapak in Kisumu City. That particular receipt is supposed to be supported by either the, 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 the official receipt, we have the official receipt if they are using, using manual. But if they are using the system, the system generates a receipt which is supposed now to support this amount of money that the county has received from a particular individual or organization. That is the supporting document that the Auditor General wants to see. So what challenge are you having, George, if this money is being sent to you from Treasury and he has explained, how is it not possible to generate those uh, receipts from the system? See, see. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, as I explained the capacity uh, the, uh, deficits that we had for which we needed help from the National Treasury. And so it's true that the reports then were generated manually and not through IFMIS until we got that help. But I have the head of reporting here who can also explain that more in response to what Treasury has said. But, but Prof, I, I think we, we are finding that explanation to be lazy. It is um, an issue of credit and debit. When you receive money, you uh, create a credit entry. Is it a credit entry? When you spend money, you create a debit entry. And any accountant, any person with that responsibility should know that for you to be able to spend on IFMIS, there must be a corresponding credit. So it's laziness. It's not capacity. We have gone to far-flung counties like Turkana. They don't have these problems. I don't expect Kisumu City to have that kind of deficit that you've got accountants who do not know how to debit and credit in the system. So it's, it's, it's a lazy excuse um, and uh, we do not expect that these are the issues that should be coming out of Kisumu City County. It's debit credit. So the head of reporting, what, what do you have to say? Okay, let, let, let's hear from the head of reporting when we come back to Senator Chair, okay? Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, it is true that um, PFM Act requires 100% reporting from IFMIS. And um, when CC brought some changes within finance, we realized that indeed the officer was supposed to post these transactions in IFMIS had capacity challenges and um, I resorted to posting these things manually. So manual report was correct, but however, uh, when editor <laughs> called us that this had to be seen to reflect 100% posting in IFMIS. So to, re to resolve that issue, the annex that is just posted here, we started from right now from 1st July. When we get disbursement notice from the National Treasury, we pick the same data and enter the same in IFMIS with the reference references that are uh, within CBK or Central Bank of Kenya. So um, our plan uh, through the support of Chief So the guy who was being paid a salary to do that was not doing that? He was somehow analog, uh, Mr. Chair. <laughs> so that's why we... Uh, prof. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not sitting, I'm not feeling very much at ease. These are not stories that should come from a city uh, headed by Professor Nyong. I think we have very, very high expectations of, of, of your government and very high expectations of your leadership. So now you hear people are being paid salaries to do jobs that they weren't doing. 
And I think that's where the problem lies. You, you, you must, your troops around you, uh, you must crack the whip. Otherwise, they're going to drag your name in the mud. Yeah. You know, this is such a simple thing that should not arise. In fact, we should not even have spent all this time on it. But uh, let me hear from Senator Chirake then. Uh, it looks like all city counties are getting adverse opinion that is coming only from Nairobi and now Kisumu. I hope the new cities that are joining will not join in the back home. But my common chair is this document of Annex 854-2232 system generator that you can hardly make out what is do this document is about unless you are using microscope to read some of these generators. Or was it generated for only face value for, to just be part of it? Because even people who are using uh, reading glasses, I doubt if they can make out. Unless Chair, we were just uh, passing time with it. Chair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Senator Chirake, I, yes. and I think I agree with Senator Sifuna's uh, earlier assertion yes. Yes. that uh, we should not be talking of uh, what is happening now we should focus on the year under review because i think those uh, the, i thought i was the only one with the problem as then they are totally irrelevant to the question because they cannot even be read i don't know anyone but, but, but the read. biggest problem chair is yeah. uh, is this yeah? uh, first chair gay ob observes rightly that uh, they are not legible documents i think maybe if we see it on a screen it might be clear you'll explain that to us but the point is if it was as simple as printing something from uh, a system like this, then uh, that guy must have been a, a terrible officer. I wanted to know, uh, Prof, uh, is this somebody you hired or uh, or, or found him at the county? We are chairman, the trouble with us, really, uh, Kisumu County and Nairobi County, Nairobi is a city county, Kisumu is a county which re re inherited a lot of municipality workers, and they are permanent and pensionable. So processing it out of the system takes time. That's why when he says the guy was there was analog, I can understand because we have quite a number of them occupying very, very, very important positions but permanent and pensionable. So you keep on shifting them around. They don't, they don't do any better. <laughs> and you can't dismiss them because we have found court cases facing us when you deal with such people that way. So it's kind of a conundrum we are involved in, uh, waiting for time to process these people out of the system. <laughs> um, Senator Chiroke, your mic is on. Are you still uh, Yes, uh, I, the, the only the management response were on 854A. I wanted to ask something on 854B, but it looks like it was only meant for, uh, I think, on part one. I don't know whether the governor had responded on part two. On not yet, oh, not yet. Yet. Senator Mtata, please go on record. Yeah. Uh, have your mic on. It's faulty. Uh, honorable Chair, <coughs> Honorable Senators, uh, Your Excellency, uh, Professor Nenmung and your team, my name is Okio Mutato Koichi, Senator from Busia and a member of this committee. Most welcome. You're welcome, Senator Omtato. Now, members, I think let's move a bit faster now on the other issues. Uh, 1.2, Auditor General. 1.2, Chair. This was... Uh, uh, yeah, well, just, just read it. Think it will be. Uh, yeah, further total receipts include counting generated receipts of Kenya shillings 1.2480639.16, which includes the main revenue generated using Safari Com platform uh, star 25 hash through 65 PayBill accounts as detailed in Appendix 1. However, the revenue statement Safari Com for each of the PayBill was not provided for it. I wish to confirm that this issue we were provided with the uh, statements. For to support the amount, and the amount was four million. The amount that we are querying, and the amount. Was it was fourteen million? Auditor General, yeah, as yes. if for for a minute, yes. read the finding, allow the county to respond, and then you'll make the explanation. 
Okay, fine. Right. All right. All right. Okay. The count is response. It's on page two. Mr. Chairman, the response up there says the county government collected 14,395,393 shillings as on source revenue on generated receipts from 65 pay bill accounts. The revenue statements have since been provided and the summary of the 65 pay bill statements are here behind. It's not that more that the county closed all the dormant pay bills and currently operating one pay bill. So if you look at the annexes 854B, page 32 to page 35, you will see the... Okay. 32. Auditor General, so what are you explaining? I was explaining that our query had been addressed because uh, they provided the, the supporting safari com statements and we were able to check them. The amount in question was 14,395,393. Thank you, Chair. Uh, 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 Professor, why, if the statements, if the revenue statements uh, were available at the time of audit, why were they not uh, presented? Mr. So, Chairman, I remember that we had to exchange correspondence a bit with Safaricom on availability of these statements, uh, and uh, they provided them to us after the audit. Uh, they argued that at their own office they needed time, that the statements were bulky. Uh, but uh, again, if this committee wants evidence of those correspondences at the late submission to us by Safaricom, we can present it. Which is the revenue statement in these uh, annexures? How does it look like? The annex case uh, on page 32, 854B, it discloses the pay bills that are in question for which we submitted the statements. Where yeah, they yes, so where is a sample of the statement, of the revenue statement, for at least one of the pay bills? Mr. The Chairman, they were reviewed by the others on site. Uh, George, what you say is that they do not form part of the annexures. So that we can move. No, but then uh, what then is our job as a Senate? If the Auditor General has said that there are certain statements that were missing and has made that part of the report and has caused the county to get an adverse opinion, we cannot sit here and then be told that the Auditor has reviewed and now it is okay. Why then do you come to the Senate? How do we close the issue without seeing that evidence that the Auditor General had quit at the time of audit? And I'm not even saying give us 65 statements. I'm just asking, show us a sample of a statement of one of the pay bills. Chairman, can I, can I inquire, how were those uh, statements sent to the Auditor? Are they in soft or uh, hard copy? So, Mr. Chairman, I'm informed the statements were sent to the auditor both in hard and soft copy. So, the soft copy is done. Uh, so, even if they are bulky, it was possible for you to share uh, with the committee just on soft so that we can have a sample. That's what the chairman is asking. There's no reason for you to exclude that uh, material. Governor, you see our problem. Do you, do you know how the Safari Com revenue statement looks like? Mr. Chairman, we hired Safaricom to collect revenue for us. I trust their collecting revenue and giving reports to the county. I guess what the finance minister is saying is that in, um, in Annex 854B, uh, we, 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 on page 32 to page 35, is uh, an itemization of the revenue streams and where they were collected and report how much was collected, which then accounts for the amount of money in question. Uh, I don't think that it would have been possible to carry receipts where the evidence has already been given here, one by one, that answers the auditor's question. Professor, you had to redo your financial statements. Your financial statements for this financial year were due on 30th of September. You redid your financial statements and presented a new set of financials in March. 
2022, in March. That was uh, almost um, six months. Uh, was that six months? No, that's not six months. That's nine months. Nine months after the closure of the financial year. Auditor General, is that correct? That's correct. So nine months after closure of financial year, this matter is still outstanding. So what I'm asking as a chair, for me to say the matter has been resolved, because the query here is that revenue statements from Safaricom were not provided for audit review. Remember, these are financial statements of uh, Arch of um, that restated in March 2022. Yes, the, the, the summary of audit adjustments were taken into account on that year. That is March? On, in, yeah, in March, yes. So you are, you are, you are